Hello again, and welcome to Advanced Physics for High School Students. This is Lesson 47, and it is entitled Totally Elastic Collisions and Ballistic Pendulums. While these topics are somewhat related, we are going to take them separately, and we'll begin with totally elastic collisions. Let's start with a demonstration. You've probably seen something called a Newton's Cradle before. Here's one that's giant-sized. Suspended from a ceiling, made of fairly large balls. It turns out that these sorts of collisions between these objects is nearly completely elastic. And combining the principles of conservation of kinetic energy along with conservation of linear momentum will explain why it is that when a single ball is pulled out of one side, a single ball goes out on the other. Or if two balls are pulled out on one side, then two will come out on the other. This device is called Newton's Cradle. So far, we've talked about collisions being interactions between two or more objects. And during that interaction, there are extreme forces that are exerted between these objects and the time interval is very short. Linear momentum is always conserved no matter what kind of collision that you have. In the special case of totally elastic collisions, not only is linear momentum conserved, but kinetic energy is also conserved. And it turns out that there are some fairly interesting applications of conservation of kinetic energy. Newton's cradle is an example. Collisions between billiard balls can be an example. In the laboratory, perhaps you have worked with cars that have magnetic bumpers on them, and those simulate completely elastic collisions. At the subatomic scale, nuclear interactions are generally looked at as elastic collisions, totally elastic collisions. Any kind of particles that interact at the subatomic level generally undergo completely elastic collisions. On the macroscopic level, totally elastic collisions are not as common as totally inelastic collisions are. Let's develop the theory for totally elastic collisions. And let's talk about collisions between two objects. Object 1 has a mass of m1 and an initial velocity of v1i. Object 2 has a mass of m2 and an initial velocity of v2i. They interact with each other. Before the collision, they're moving in a certain way. After the collision, they still have the same masses, but their final velocities have changed. They might have changed magnitude, and they might have changed direction, and their final velocities are v1f and v2f. Whenever you have a collision, Linear momentum is always conserved. So we're going to write down conservation of linear momentum. The final momentum of the system after the collision is equal to the initial momentum of the system before the collision. For these two objects, we can write this in terms of m and v. If there are vectors involved, two dimensions, then we can break this equation into x components and into y components, just as we have done for other applications of conservation of linear momentum. The new twist is that if the collision is totally elastic, not only is linear momentum conserved, but so is kinetic energy. The final kinetic energy of the system and the initial kinetic energy of the system are equal to each other. We're making the assumption that there is no energy that has been converted from kinetic energy into other forms. And technically speaking, this Newton's cradle that we just saw had energy converted into sound. Kinetic energy was going into sound, and there was probably some heat as well. But under the ideal situation, total kinetic energy is conserved, 
there are no transformations of energy into other forms. Let's write this in terms of m's and v's. For two objects, conservation of kinetic energy looks like this. And when we talk about v1 and v2, we're talking about the magnitude of the velocity. If kinetic energy is conserved, you can apply both of these equations to the situation. It turns out that there is a very special case of conservation of kinetic energy for something that is called head-on collisions. First, let's define what we mean by a head-on collision. We have two objects that are moving in one dimension. When the collision occurs, those two objects are still moving in one dimension. If you write conservation of kinetic energy for the special case of a head-on collision or a one-dimensional elastic collision, and your problem statement would need to actually say that that's what's going on in order for you to apply this, then conservation of kinetic energy reduces to a fairly simple equation. If you have the very special case of a head-on collision or one-dimensional elastic collision, then conservation of kinetic energy can be written as V2F minus V1F is equal to V1I minus V2I. And that is a vector equation, the way that that's written. Now, to get to that point requires about four pages of algebra. I will show you just quickly a derivation of it that someone else has done, and then we're going to come back and do an application. If you want to see conservation of kinetic energy derived, then come see me and I'll be happy to put you in touch with this site. But starting at the beginning is conservation of kinetic energy and conservation of linear momentum. And as you file through this derivation, you can see that the algebra is very involved. About four pages of algebra and it's a complicated situation. So my suggestion is I'm not going to ask you to be able to derive conservation of kinetic energy, this special statement, but I want you to realize that you can use this special case equation when the situation warrants. Let's take a look at a particular example. Example 47.2 says this, a neutron has a mass of 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms and is traveling with a speed of 3.5 times 10 to the 4 meters per second when it collides head-on with an alpha particle initially at rest. The mass of the alpha particle is 6.64 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. The collision is totally elastic. Determine the velocities of the neutron and the alpha particle after the collision. So here is a situation in which we have a totally elastic collision that is head-on. And so we can apply our principle. Let's sketch a diagram. Before the collision occurs, the neutron has some initial speed, but the alpha particle is initially at rest. After the collision occurs, both particles are going to be moving. We don't know what the direction that the neutron is going to be moving. The alpha particle we know is going to have to move to the right. I suspect, based on our work with the carts that we dealt with in previous lab settings, that this is like the VW colliding with the Mack truck in a completely elastic way, so that the neutron is likely to be moving to the left after the collision with some fairly substantial speed, whereas the alpha particle is going to lumber off to the right with some fairly slow speed. That's the way I'm going to sketch the after diagram. So let's apply our principles. We have two unknowns here. We're trying to find the final velocity of the neutron and the final velocity of the alpha particle. Let's first write conservation of linear momentum. The final momentum of the system is equal to the initial momentum of the system. Now, since this is a one-dimensional case, I'm going to drop the vector signs and let the sign, S-I-G-N, of the velocity tell me whether the object's moving to the right or moving to the left. We're going to call to the right positive. There's a statement of conservation of linear momentum for this situation. Since the alpha particle is initially at rest, it has no initial momentum. 
Now let's apply our special case formula for conservation of kinetic energy. Conservation of kinetic energy for this special elastic head-on collision case is given by this expression, V alpha final minus V neutron final is equal to V neutron initial. Remember that the initial velocity of the alpha particle is zero. At this point, you could do a couple of things to solve this problem. You could either do a direct substitution. I think I'm going to try to solve this using TI solve. So let's go back and put some numbers in to our two equations. It's going to get a little complicated, but we can do this. There's the conservation of linear momentum equation with the variables substituted. Now let's write the conservation of kinetic energy equation. So there's the second equation. I'm going to put these equations into the TI solve and figure out what V alpha final and V neutron final are. I'll use X's and Y's in my substitution. I'm not going to actually show it here, but I'm going to substitute it in and see what we come up with. I get that the neutron is moving to the left with a speed of 2.1 times 10 to the 4 meters per second, and that the alpha particle is moving to the right with a speed of 1.4 times 10 to the 4 meters per second. So our initial hunch was right that the alpha particle would be moving to the right with a slow speed while the neutron is bounced back to the left with some speed that's more substantial than the alpha particle but not as much as the initial speed. That is an application of conservation of kinetic energy for a special case of a head-on or one-dimensional collision that's totally elastic. Now let's move on to the second part of this lesson.